But am I going to get screwed on YouTube today, or aren't I? Hey, as I'm Sven Blaine, the den, going to Burik's quarters this time, because last time I was a complete tease. Oh, it's his apartments. I guess that's the same thing. <sighs> He's not above having a disgusting pot of Resident Evil 4 style food. It's begun to rot. There's one book, there's other books that look like differently shaped things. It's quite the black magic, I must tell you. And here's a solitary piece of loot, and two other solitary pieces of loot that are looking a little less solitary now, aren't they? Well, Laboric, watch Viney. I have been worried about him lately. I feel he suspects something about the den. I have caught him more than once asking questions about the Forbidden Sector and lurking near the hiding places of the Red Stones. Do whatever is necessary if you must, Larsen. <laughs> I think. Also, yes. Laboric, memorize this memo and burn it once it is done. The senses. Obtain the five red stones and then collect the five senses key which opens the access to the five locks of the den. Each of the den locks is activated in a different way. One stone for each corresponding lock. Trying to activate the accesses can be dangerous if you do not take care. Access test. A powerful poison? I could use Berenice's help with this problem. Access hearing. That Bertold was so Machiavellian. I almost died in there. Breaking up your ears is the only possible solution. Access sight. What are those strange creatures? I have never seen such things in my life. The fortress must have bred them itself. Access touch. The answer was right under my eyes. The number sequence begins nearest the hand. Access smell. I fell for this one and got quite a sinusitis from it. Watch where you put your feet. Note. I have put the stones back in their original positions. I have put the five sensors key back where I found it. In the chapel. It is safe in there. I lock the forbidden sector door also. But the smell was just behind the portrait of Berthold, so I don't get it. My dear brother, if I shall die, I want this piece of writing to come to you so you can understand why you have lost me. Today I saw the devil. He was in front of me, haughty and full of himself, and his features were those of my beloved mentor. This thing is devouring what matters the most in the world for me, my only friend. Nevertheless, in this creature I still find a few features of what have been last seen. When appeased, it finally leaves his exhausted body. Then this is my friend who talks and smiles. That's why I won't attempt anything against him. He takes hostage of one of my dearest. I am helpless against this power, and I'm sure he knows it. The devil hides within his house. He had waited for years before he can again feed off a sound and strong soul, and he chose my master for his feast. I'm loyal. I always knew I will follow Larsen as far as hell if he needs so, and the time has come. I didn't think it would come so soon, nor that hell would take the appearance of an old ruined building. But it is known the beast takes many aspects to fool us more easily. Will I begin to reason as an old hammerite? When Larsen has told me that the house speaks to him, I have been tempted to smile. But I will know my friend and know he is not a man to hallucinate. He told me the house was telling him things, stories of glory and power. It told about this treasure buried for years in the ruins of its birth, and that if he would agree to enter the den and contemplate the heart, it would give him a part of this power, then he would be stronger each time and forever. And so he contemplated the heart. I expected no less of him. I know there is a sort of delicacy in Larsen, as there is in everyone anyway. The first to reveal this flaw was Garrett. I then believed Larsen was becoming mad. He had only one obsession in mind, to find this thief and make him pay for what he had done by any means, even if it would sacrifice our guild. Today, while Garrett is in our hands, I find again this worrying expression in Larsen's eyes. I know it indicates he is contemplating the great chaos heart itself. Now the fortress has subdued him and my friend goes away from me a little more each day. Larsen has shown me how to open the gate of the den with the gems by activating a tortuous lock system conceived by the old Berthold to protect this vile crystal. If this old man were now in front of me, I would joyfully help his passing. We owe him all our misfortunes. He unearthed this evil gem from the grave it was sleeping in for decades. It was him who awoke the demon. 
and as Lao Sein told me, he well paid the price. So did Lao Sein offered me the access to the den, and much more if I want to. But I don't want this gift. I don't want to lose myself in submission to eternal damnation, despite the simulacrum of invulnerability. Nor I will sell my soul to a demon for a gem, albeit priceless. If I agree to go through the buried passages of the den beside my friend, it's because I will surely find a way to free him from this ascendancy in this evil place. I think the soul of this entity is contained in the crystal, the heart of Molte, as Lausain calls it. This huge sanguine gem is set in the heights of the old palace ruins. From thence comes its damned strength. Ah, Lausain calls me. Once more we will descend the beast guts. Once more we will pace its cold and damp corridors to reach the heart, where once again I will see my friend lose a little more of his soul. Banar, also called La Bourique. <laughs> so it's a big old monstrous gem, as it often is. I don't know. Okay. Uh, your crystal of molt to get the jewel. Fine. I've always thought that evil artifacts were always just a little bit of a cop-out. I mean, it's not, it's certainly not that bad, but, uh, I, it just, to me, seems like not that interesting of a way for someone to go insane. Uh, but, I don't know, I mean, you can't expect everything to be crazy, psychological, mad stuff, because almost nothing is, it's kind of weird. <laughs> what? That sounds like a body that constantly shifts itself. Okay, then. Thought it was some evil stomper. So what have I got? I've got the touch. I've got <laughs> the What's hearing, the smell, and the taste. So really, I, I only need this one here, then. Powerful poison, though. Did I get the one that needed a powerful poison of it? Oh, right! It was in Berenice's lab. Wait a minute, it wasn't here. I think this is wrong, because it says touches over here. But... I've already got the touch. <laughs> what? <laughs> the touch? What? Pray I don't remember this one. <laughs> right. Uh, I had to look that one up. Well... Now, yeah, I think that touch place is where I actually use the touch, so really, I still only need one more, but it's... Oh, the... the something. It's the sight that I need. Ah. <laughs> well, okay, it's a secret. And there's somebody burning in hell over there, by which I mean it's a fireplace, so a log is burning in hell. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. Well, that's some kind of a way into your apartment. Not very fancy, but La Seine is not a very fancy guy. He only talks a bit like this, because, you know, oh, Garrett, you ain't gonna survive long. Oh, hey, it's a sword, because it went directly to La Seine. New objectives again still, what? Uh, good, you found your sword. Oh, yeah, okay, fine. A horn of Quintus. I guess I understand now Eshiktar from Broken Triad when he keeps saying that he's seen that horn in every single fan mission ever. Boss, I beg to report that Viney is dead. I caught him as he managed to open the secret hiding place for one of the red stones. He had not yet found the stone, so I tried to convince him to stop his investigations at once. But alas, he was frightened, stammering on and on about ghosts and about how we were all damned if we should remain in this place. He then attacked with the strength of many men, but I was the victor in the struggle. As soon as my duties permit, I will bury the corpse. La Bourrique. Oh, okay. Is, is there anything else in here besides my sword? Well, I guess so. Guess I'm gonna find something evil. <laughs> I want that sword. It looks like a better deal than mine. Grass is always bloodier. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I found my sword, but surely there's other reasons for me to come in here. There must be, because I I don't think I got anything important in here. Unless I've just immediately forgotten, which does sometimes happen. I don't know, that looks a bit suspicious to me, but... Eh. Hey. Come on, who are you? Get out of here! Might as well. Creatures. Creatures that the fortress bred itself? 
And that's where I find the site. Bam. I knew it! I knew this place was not natural. Whoa, it's a huge freaking place with Egyptian beds and everything. Wow. Um, I don't think I feel so safe in here. Wow, it's an evil bedroom or office. Well, there's no bed, so it's an office. Hey, we gotta use the right terminology in our video games. I wish the engine would not keep layering sounds over like that. It's so dumb. I should have fixed it in New Dark Air. Dear Laura, my success is close at hand. I discover the secrets of this fortress and no longer need to activate the five senses to enter the heart. Though I know it intends to possess me, I fear not, as my will is like Aaron. Nothing can control me. Gaining its confidence was more difficult. I have let it think it has tricked me into servitude. I graciously accepted the few pathetic treasures it offered, but it is a heart I want, a jewel of immense beauty and power. I have seen it. According to legends, a crystal inhales life energy. That is why this fortress seems almost alive. It is my guess that a crystal is like the soul of this place. But a blind and primitive soul whose only purpose is to divine and exist off of the life energy of others like a vampire feeds on blood. But I will control the crystal before it can control me. La Bourique shares not my confidence in this matter. He worries about me. A faithful friend is he. He believes I am already a slave to this place and the power of the crystal. He is wrong. I visit the heart frequently now. I bring with me only the most strong-willed and fearless of my host, as many of my men are afraid and not yet ready to accept the terrible secrets of this place. But still, I must limit each man's exposure to the heart of the fortress. For slowly the heart will consume them as their will is not as ironclad as my own. Once I have rid the fortress of the stone sentinels, it will have no defenses and the heart will be mine. But I have not yet found a way to neutralize them. I must and keep my intentions unknown to the heart and find a way. I must not lose the fragile confidence that the heart has shown me. For if my intentions were to be known, the sentinels would destroy us all. But worry not, I will prevail, your faithful friend, Larsen. Who is he even talking to? Maybe he's just not done writing it. And not done sending it. Uh, okay, I opened up this then. Wow. This place just doesn't end. Boss, I've been thinking about our problem with the Sentinels. Those fire arrows may prove useful as a last resource. <laughs> okay. Or, or last recourse. But hey. Oh yes. This is the thing I'm looking for, clearly. Oh! What? <sighs> I am Garrett, and you're about to get fan mission win. I want to put something up in the rafters. Oh, hey. Well, that's kind of all I have time for for today. It's a bit of a short video, but that's just how it's going to have to be. Next time, I'm going to the Forbidden Zone, so see you guys later. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.